Hi everyone and welcome. Okay, today's video, this is probably a little bit of a strange introduction. However, I know I've been a little bit quiet for a while on and off. This is the reason why. Rebuild, where have I been? As you can see, and as some of you probably already know, I have been moving house this year. I moved house in April actually, and since then there's been a lot of work going on surrounding the house and other bits and pieces I've been dealing with as well. One of those is to the right hand side of that picture, which is a German Shepherd. He's 10 months old now, and uh, he's been keeping me extremely busy, shall we say. Quite a few people I've talked to have actually said they're worse than having kids. I think they might be right, to be honest with you. But um, let me just show you the state of the place, and then you'll understand kind of what I've been doing and how that's been affecting progress on what I want to actually do and show you okay so here's the next slide here so as you can see I've had people on the roof I've had people with diggers in the front driveway breaking that up mountains of soil uh, new water pipe I'll just get rid of that so you can't see there you go a uh, new water pipe as well so water mains so all that's been done and a messy back garden and skips and skips full of rubbish basically so with that and the dog and trying to run the business trying to fit in a little bit of race and you can imagine that my concentration levels haven't been the highest however what I'm going to show you is all going to kind of relate back to this now okay next snap there for you as you can see that's actually that top left one's actually my bedroom which isn't the best at the moment We've had kitchen getting sorted out, tiling work going on, plossing work going on, guys on site, in and out. I've had no peace and quiet, mess everywhere, and uh, as you can see by the photographs. Next one here, plumbers have been in as well. We've got stud work up everywhere. That's actually the dog kennel in the back garden going up. Tile work in the kitchen and things like that are more or less finished now. Still quite a lot of work to do in the house, to be honest, but... Um, most important thing was just to get in and organized and then get to a stage where I could actually get back to work. So desk is set up there in my new office with a beer as well to boot. You can see that the kennels there as well been moved over and garden looking a lot tidier than some of the other pictures. And their builder's breakfast. So not only have I been actually on site as it were, mucking in and helping out where I can and doing what I can do, I've also been eating like a builder as well, which certainly doesn't do you any good. But um, I thought I'd put that picture in anyway, just in case it makes anybody want to go and get a bacon sandwich. Okay, so all that's been happening, it's been crazy busy. It's took a lot longer than I suspected it was going to. A good few weeks longer, to be honest with you. In the meantime, I've obviously been trying to sit at my desk and scribble some things down for you guys. Videos, emails, you know how it is. I always like to try and give you the best I possibly can. And unfortunately, haven't been able to spend or dedicate the time which I wanted to. However, we are getting there now. Although it's a slightly blurry picture, that's me sitting in the new office. Camcorder there, and as you can see, very, very unshaven. So we'll head over to Betfair. I'll show you and tell you a little bit more about what I've been doing since all this work, all this moving, unpacking, and dealing with the dog and everything else I've got going on at the moment. So I don't want any sympathy. <laughs> obviously I know everybody else out there is busy as well the reason why I'm showing you and telling you all this is because I'm going to relate it back to Betton okay so obviously we know with Betton the more time the more effort the more study you do the better I certainly wouldn't disagree with that but I want to show you something which I've been doing and working on quick fast and simple whenever I've had a few spare minutes and I'll show you the results there now as well so let's head over to Bedfair and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Okay, so all I want to do now is just actually show you one of the things I've been working on. As I've obviously showed you before, I've been in the middle of a house move. I've also got a new puppy to deal with. He's 10 months old now, but he's um, basically like having a teenager in the house. So as you can see here, a few bets, quite a few wins, quite a few losses, however, the most important thing, as always, is profit and loss and consistent profit and loss, covering 
any potential losses on a daily basis. If you can make profit every single day, you're doing really, really well. And as you can see here, horse racing, 115 pounds and 28 pence. So I just really wanted to show you that now. And that's for the last three months. If we look at the last seven days, 39 pounds and 84 pence for the last seven days. So not too bad. A couple of mistakes I made actually, because I was, like I say, I'm not really taking much time doing this. It's just really basic form reading and I'm just putting the bets on and going with what the selection pick has actually given me. So not too bad. I'll actually work out the ratio between the last three months bets because I haven't been betting every day. But that's all I wanted to show you. Hi everyone and welcome. Okay, so in this video I just want to show you a couple of FL selections. This one here, top rated selection we can see is Julius Giza. He's on plus 12. The next one there is Barkstone Ash. He's on 10. And there's quite a few there. The next three horses down which are on 7. And then you got a 5, minus 4 and a 10. Okay, so this one's a handicap. What we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the racing post. I'm going to run through a few things on the race card. We'll go into everything in a little bit more detail, and then we'll see how the horse gets on. Okay, another day and another race card. This one here is a 255 at Hamilton. It's six furlong race on good ground. Weather's been a little bit kinder the last couple of days. So, the software, as you've obviously seen, has brought up the top two selections which is the first one here in the betting, Julius, Julius Geezer, and Boxstone Ash. In between those two is Sovereign Street. So what we're going to do is quickly check them out on the race card, see how this compares to what we already have seen in the software, and then we'll go from there. So at first glance, course and distance, distance, distance course and distance distance nothing on this one which is a bit of a surprise course and distance course and distance and nothing here quickly look at form this is more than likely the reason why Julius is obviously favored for this one last two races both been won if we have a look down at Boxstone which is the other one uh, second and third so not too bad from that horse the rest here, nothing really to write about. Sovereign Street, he's earned his place there, second favourite due to this second. Not much for the other two there. We quickly just have a look. Obviously it is a handicap, so the RPR ratings, as you can see, all pretty tight. If you have a look at these in relation to where the horse is actually positioned here as well. Verdict straight away is Sovereign Street had the rest well beaten when just denied in a maiden handicap at Redco, but Julius Giza, who is today's nap, scored easily over course and distance last week and can repeat the dose. Boxton Ash can fill third place. Okay, so that's Andrew's opinion there. Let's have a quick look at selections. Very much the same. Straight away, Julius is on seven. Obviously, we know he's napped. Everybody's kind of went from him. Boxton's there as well. Express have gone for him. Oh, he's there as well. He's actually had three. Okay, so that's a little bit more interesting, especially in relation to what the software's shown us already. Okay, so just bearing that in mind, let's have a look at the horses themselves. See how they measure up. Six furlong race, as we know. Okay, today's class is class five. So let's just quickly go down to that. You can see he's actually he's won a class two, he's won a class four, hasn't actually won a class five. He's won class six as well. And 
Let's have a look. Ground is good today. Ten starts, two wins, second and third. So he's obviously fine on the ground. Six furlongs. I think it's actually slightly more. Yes, it's six furlongs and five yards, which obviously makes a huge difference if the horse is stretching his legs. Um, obviously, I'm only, I'm only joking there. The five, five yards is nothing. Okay, so ran once, won as well. That one's fine so far. Let's see what the competition's like. Straight away, first thing I see about this horse is the number of races. Six. Okay, so that's a negative. You got to mark that down straight away, in my opinion. Second last time out, okay, fair enough. Uh, he's got a couple of places on there as well, as we know. Stats wise, six furlong, four starts, no wins, seven furlong. Nothing there. He has had a second and third at um, six furlongs. Class hasn't actually done it there either. Read into that as you will. Check out the next one, which is an FL pick. Stats for this horse. Okay, so distance as well. Four wins at six furlong. Six furlong, five yards, which is a strange one. Nothing there, but he has come second and a third. Be interesting to see when those races were. Ground two wins, not a problem. Class two wins, not a problem. Just go back to form. And if you just go through, and we can see here, that's the last time he won a race. Here as well. It's actually last year. This season. Looks like he struggled a bit here, really, to get some form and fitness back. And then he's bounced back at Hamilton with a second and third. So more to come from this horse, I would suspect. And just for peace of mind, let's check out this one. Fifth, eleventh, sixth. So as we can see here. 14 at 6 furlong, 1 win, a few places there as well, 2 wins at the distance, nothing at all, going which is good, he's had 12 starts of it, he hasn't won any yet, 3 seconds and 2 thirds, so, class 5, 28 starts, 5 wins, so he's fine at the class, the ground, he's had plenty of chances to win, still hasn't managed to pick one up yet, so I think we'll leave that one alone as well. Okay, so these are my two selections here and here. I'm going to leave this one out. Sometimes you will find that some horses, like I say, are difficult to rate when they've only had less than eight runs. They do sometimes creep up and surprise you and win races to find and pick out reasons why. Sometimes it could be down to speed. Sometimes it could be just down to general fitness and the horse is just ready to win at this particular time. It could be down to other horses within the race not performing as well as they should and should easily beat the selection. But we'll wait and see. We'll, we'll wait for the race to start and uh, then we'll just go and check the result just so you don't have to listen to the full commentary. Okay, so like I said, go with Julius. He's well and truly picked out here. The other selection though, Box Nash. He's there as well. Just out of Daphnis, let's check out post data. And they've gone for Distant Sun here as well. He's a 14 to 1. Don't see him doing a lot. Trainer form. Two ticks here. The rest going pretty much the same. Distance pretty much there. Course. Bit hit and miss with the course. Someone's done. He's obviously question marked at the course as well. Ability. Well, they're all nearly on two, apart from the bottom two. In recent form, well, we know he's won. And the others have shown that they can do. They can certainly, f and the others have shown that they can obviously finish within the places. Okay, so we'll be back in a little while. We'll check the result and we'll see how they get on. Okay, so the race has been ran. As you can see, Boxton won it. Sovereign Street actually came second. So 
little bit of a surprise and mystery surrounding this horse. Next one was Rio, which I think was an eight to one. And fourth was Julius Giza, who was the nap. And obviously on the day, for whatever reason, he didn't perform. So what you could do next time out, if you spot this horse, have a look at this race, see if there's any reason to suggest that he had a bad day or something just wasn't right for him. But again, we had two horses and we had the winner. So you can't ask for any more than that. That's everything for now in this video. And I'll catch you all again later. Thanks for watching. Reasonably fast out and headed off by Rio Cabolo, dark blue with the yellow stars. She's getting those men up there. Nice one, my son, Maroon, close to the rail. Maroon with a grey seems to the outside. That's Mango Music. Julius Giza is in fifth spot. Can't get to the front today. Made all to win last week. Currently sits in fifth. On that one's outside the white sleeves is Sovereign Street. And then the black and white stripe Gap Princess and the white and brown Wheaton 30. They are now at halfway. And Bart Stanash quite well back beforehand. The yellow and white striped sleeves is well to the fore, which is the far side Mango Music. Firmly driven by Barry McHugh is nice one, my son. Next to the rail, Rio Cabola under the whip. Julius Giza has got work to do. Sovereign Street is trying to get involved in behind the red with the white sleeves, but it's Bart Stanash and Jason Hart that leads the way by over a length to Rio Cabolo. Here comes Sovereign Street with a challenge inside the furlong. But it is Bart Stanash that has it by about a length and a half. Sovereign Street will be the threat and is trying to pick up. But it is Bart Stanash and the promising apprentice Jason Hart who's going to ride his sixth winner of the year and in some style too. Well back, Bart Stanash wins. Second was Sovereign Street. Then Rio Cabolo, Julius Giza never really involved. And of Wheaton 30 next. Well, Barks and Ash, we saw that uh, video, that galloping clue of him finishing third at Hamilton Park here seven days ago to Julius Giza, who's bombed out really today in the hat-trick bid. Barks and Ash has won really well. Sovereign Street uh, stuck on for second. Ria Cabolo was up there forcing the pace, has uh, just flattened out into third place. The winner's won well, Tom. Won really well. Under another good ride from Jason Har. We saw him excel here last week on uh, one of Eric Olsen's saddle slips in the early stages. Saddle slipped back into place in the latter stages. He got a great tune out of it to get up and win. He had no such problems this afternoon. Kept uh, this horse right up to his work. Won well. Turned the tables on Julius Giza, who never, for some reason, looked quite as happy today uh, under these conditions. And even though waited to confirm that superiority. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you all again very soon. Thanks a lot.